Hello everyone, I'm Aragama and this is the first episode of How to Live 2D Basics. Um, in this one it's showing you how to set up the art and now I'm going to be time lapsing the art because it's very very time consuming. Um, but right now I'm just giving a basic design, uh, drawing out what I want. I use the symmetry tool in my Clip Studio Paint in order to get both sides uh, even. One thing you need to remember with live 2D art is that you're going to have to draw parts of it that you would normally draw. For example, like drawing the back of a hair you wouldn't normally see or the top of the head that you wouldn't normally see and all that would be adjusted later on. And you're going to need left and rights for each side. It gets a little confusing but you can kind of see here how I'm separating everything. I'm drawing everything on its own layer um, and then I will end up cutting it up left and right afterwards. It just makes it easier for me. And any part that I want to move or is going to have any sort of flexibility needs to sort of be on its own layer. So since like, for example, the arms are uh, not going to bend too much, they're just kind of rotate a little bit, I don't need to worry about an elbow or a hand joint. But if I was doing a full model, I would definitely have the hand separate. I'd have the uh, forearm separate and the upper arm separate. And now I'm going through and naming my um, <laughs> naming my layers and organizing them into folders. Uh, do keep in mind that uh, Live 2D apparently doesn't like to go into more than like three folders deep, which should be fine for the most part. Um, I usually label them from like the head and then like the upper torso, lower torso, and accessories. And um, also one for emotions, which I'm adding in right now. And I try to keep in mind how things are going to move as well. So you're going to draw past certain areas and you're also uh, may want to draw extra. So for example, like there's extra hair that you don't normally see when I'm facing forward, but when I turn sideways, you see it. Um, the same for this. I try to keep in mind how it's going to animate. And when shading, you have to be pretty careful because you don't want to have shading on, say, the face that isn't going to be a movable object. For example, like my, my hair, my front hair, my bangs. If I had that just shaded directly on the skin layer, then when I moved my hair back and forth, it would stay still and that would look a little odd. So for me, my um, the shading for my hair on my face is actually a separate layer. Um, and for this one, I tend to put like all the makeup on a separate layer as well. So I'll have one for the cheek for the left side, cheek for the right side, eyeliner for the right side, eyeliner for the left side. Also, I'm trying to get everything in organized and um, <laughs> you can see how I'm adding like additional eye expressions that will switch out later on. They're going to be triggerable. Um, so it's not like when I just, ah, it's going to suddenly do it. Although I could, <laughs> you could, but uh, it's not going to work too, too well. I also have the pupils separate from the iris itself because I want to be able to adjust the size of it. Um, I like doing it when eyes are shocked, they get a little narrower and smaller. And um, you're also going to need like, you know, the scalera, which is the whites in the back and the highlights all on separate layers. And everything that's on a separate layer can be moved independently. So if I wanted to add one highlight on a, like one of the highlight circles, on a layer, I could add another highlight circle and another layer, and then I can move them all independently. On this particular one, I am keeping them all together. It's going to be kind of a little bit chonkier. <laughs> um, and why I'm doing uh, a chibi is actually, I did start out doing a full size model, but I ended up losing about four hours of the work footage due to some nonsense so I decided to redo it as a chibi <laughs> um, and so I'm doing the, the ears here and I'm doing it in three parts which is the inner fluff the uh, back of the ear which is blue and then the front of the ear which is pink which is uh, very similar to how I did a full-size model ears and that's so when I turn the head I can adjust 
uh, the size and thickness and stuff. Uh, for the hair, I am keeping it really close together at the at the tip. Like mine has like a little bit of a um, a widow's peak before it like swooshed each side. Uh, for the chibi version, I'm not doing that. So I'm trying to be very careful where I cut it in half because it's going to have to stay lined up there. And there is a gluing technique in Live 2D, but I don't know if I'm really going to touch on it too much because gluing is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> I can rarely ever get it to work. Um, now I've drawn both eyes here and there's a possibility that when I go to rig it, I'm not going to use both eyes. I might just use one side and then just flip it over. Uh, the idea is that once you've done one, you can actually just kind of copy and flip, so that way you don't have to worry about doing the other eye. Um, and you can cut the like a long sh uh, hair up like this, the braid, uh, but I'm going to show you a skinning technique for this, um, which would be the same technique I used on my tail. <laughs> And it's just uh, a lot of trying to have some forethought of to what, you know, you're going to need and how you're going to need it. Um, and you might mess up. And if you're an artist, like, you can always just take that shit right back into your program and fix it. Um, and if you're not an artist, you might have to go take it to your artist being like, hey, this needs to be fixed. Hmm. Um. Excuse me. Uh, when I do my chibis, I tend to very, very much simplify things, but when I do full-size models, I tend to overly complicate them. I will add patterns on separate layers, I'll add sh shading on separate layers, um, I make sure that it works with um, the multiply option, because I know Live 2D has a multiply option. Um, like, so for example, this pattern here, normally I wouldn't have added it on here, I would have done it separately. And then I would have done the shading on top separately as well. But since it's just a simple chibi, I decided that I was going to just leave it as is. It'll also show you how you can kind of get past using so many um, uh, deformers. Because you're very limited in your deformers for free. And since I assume many people who are going to be using this are going to be using the free version because... You know, money. <laughs> um, but it, it there's a little. It takes a little time to learn, and like, if you hire someone to do it, it is expensive. But it's not like it's not worth it. It is a lot of work, and it's definitely worth paying. You know, for their time and effort and their knowledge. Uh, that being said, this is mostly to help people who want to kind of, you know, do it on their own or find a cheaper alternative because not everyone can afford such you know, luxuries of things, which is why I had to learn how to do all this myself. And I'm uh, fortunate that I started with a art background. Um, so even if I say that things are expensive, that doesn't mean I inherently dislike it. That just means that it is more expensive than, say, a free 3D modeling program. <laughs> um but yeah, so like you can kind of see what I'm doing here where I'm like coloring each side individually and how I have like overlay. So even though like when that front of the torso is on, you don't see the back of the arms. But when we decide to move it, we're going to want to see those back of the arms. And we have like the neck separate so that way we can move the head up and down and back and forth and such. So we're going to have to take some liberties on some of the uh, motions such as the or so hoodie and like normally you would do like um like the the breasts or the upper torso on its own layer so that way you can do the breathing um and such but eh. oh we'll we'll figure it out <laughs> i like the i like the wing it <laughs> And I wanted to have like an emotion, like a comfy, where it's just like curled up in these tails. 
<laughs> so that's what I'm doing here is I'm trying to do a, a nine tail kind of curl up thing. Or ah, just curl up in all the tails. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the art for this took, I think, a f quite a few hours. It's pretty time consuming, to be honest, like doing art for Live 2D, which is why I do not like it. Uh, the one for this big model took me about a week to do. Um, and this little model I was able to do in a day because it's not overly complicated. Uh, but it was pretty, <laughs> pretty long time. <laughs> Um, at this point, I'm, after I've cut everything up and, and stuff, I've saved it and, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. You want to, uh, make sure you save it as a PSD file. So, uh, that way it can be opened in, uh, live 2D because they like Photoshop PSD files. So as long as your art program is that, you can use whatever art program you want. I use Clip Studio Paint EX. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the art. Um, if you have any questions about it, you can ask me down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And um, in the next episode, we're going to learn about um, parameters and meshes and stuff and, and hot words like vertices. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so so much for watching this episode. Uh, if you want to see more from me, then please subscribe. If you like this, uh, give it a like. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. So bye. <laughs>